Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Tom Elpel, and uh, I got started with plants uh, primarily through my grandmother. Uh, lived in California when I was a kid, and we came up every summer to Montana to be with the extended family. And uh, my grandmother lived uh, over by Virginia City on uh, what was called Granite Creek, or Granny Creek, as we called it. And uh, every day we'd go on a, a walk down in the fields, and she had uh, taken some classes on edible and medicinal plants. So we would uh, pick things like um, red clover, blue violets, uh, peppermint, uh, lots of different uh, herbs that uh, bring back and dry for tea. She had an entire pantry that was dedicated to uh, wild tea. Uh, so she you know, gathered a lot, uh, dried it, stored it, and then she cooked on a wood cook stove. And as part of the daily ritual, there was a pot of tea, herbal tea, on the stove. And so uh, I grew up with that influence. And um, on our walks, there were many flowers that she knew. And so I got started with those, and then I wanted to know all the rest. And so uh, as in junior high and high school, and I moved up here to Montana. And uh, in junior high and high school, and so I was uh, bringing back flower samples and then just paging through the, the color picture books. Uh, wanting to learn, you know, to identify these plants and learn about their uses. And so I was able to learn a lot of uh, plants that way. And anything that uh, I, did, I couldn't find in my books, I would take into the uh, herbarium at the uh, university there in Bozeman. And I'd hand it over to a botanist and they'd uh, key it out. And then um, give me a, a botanical name and I'd take that back and read anything that I could uh, find about that. And so just kind of learning plants one at a time, I felt like I was uh, getting to know a lot of the, you know, most of the plants in southwest Montana. Uh, and then um, years later, I uh, started a school and uh, had, a, um, hosted an herbal, you know, had an herbal class, to, uh, hosted an herbalist, uh, Robin Klein from Bozeman came over. And it was really interesting, uh, her walk, it, was, it wasn't necessarily family pattern specific, but uh, when she would come to a plant, like, uh, say, a syncophoil in the rose family, she would say, you know, here's uh, this syncophoil from the rose family. Notice how, like other members of the rose family, it has five petals. It has lots of stamens. And the vegetation is astringent. It's, uh, it's got these uh, tannins, these acids in there that uh, will... Well, just like if you've eaten choke cherries before, you kind of get that, that cotton mouth that the, uh, the tannins in there uh, close off the secretions uh, in your mouth, and so your mouth dries up. So you could use uh, vegetation with these uh, astringent qualities uh, medicinally on uh, externally, say if you had a rash uh, or a cut or a swelling, anything that needed to you know, sort of draw it down, uh, you could you know, poultice that up and put it on there. Or you could take it internally to uh, dry out your system. Say if you had diarrhea, you could uh, dry out your system with a, kind of an astringent. And so through the course of the day, there were a number of these patterns that came up for the rose family, for the buttercups. And uh, it just fascinated me because I had never seen you know, or heard that before. I, I had books that would m list the family for a plant but not mention why something was in that family or how that information would be useful. And so uh, that was sort of, that was what set me off on the quest to write Botany in a Day, was to find out what those patterns are for the different uh, plant families, what are the patterns for identification, and what are the patterns uh, for uses. There's a lot of different uh, seed shapes that, you know, there's some seeds that are kind of flat and heart-shaped, there's some that are round, some are round and flat, some are round and globe-like, uh, some are long and uh, skinny, some look like a snake that's been eating eggs, okay? All these different uh, seed types, but they all kind of have that uh, spiral staircase look on the stem. So if we turn over to 111, you'll see some examples of the, the seed pods, and you can see how they have a little spiral staircase. 
And that works for most mustards. Uh, there are some that are not very obvious. This uh, tumble mustard, uh, it does have a little spiral staircase going on here. If you get down to the seed pods, it just doesn't, it's not as pronounced as it is in others. Um, so, you know, you might not recognize that one right off, but most mustards, you'll recognize them by a little spiral staircase. So what's this? <laughs> Very good, a nice one for looking at the banner wings and keel. Go ahead and pass that around. And uh, one thing I'll uh, come to uh, and plants is uh, leaves versus leaflets uh, that there's a lot of plants that have compound leaves and in this case we have this is one leaf right here that's been divided down into leaflets so it's a, a pinnate leaf uh, Compares the leaflets, this actually looks more like stipules here, um, but this being one leaf. And don't worry if that doesn't, if that's a little fuzzy, it'll make more sense as we go along. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and pass that around. Okay. And we have this one. What family? Mustard. Very good. Okay. And so we have a radish there, four petals, six stamens, four tall, two short. Uh, pass that around. Let's see. How about that one? That's kind of a long ways away to look at a little tiny flower. Grass. Pea. Okay. It looks like a pea. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so look real close. There's banner wings and keel here. Uh, and in this case, the leaf is three-parted, uh, so this is one leaf, okay? Uh, three-parted leaf. Go ahead and uh, pass that around. Uh, how about this uh, flower plant? Spirals on a stem? It's a mustard. Mustard. Spirals on the stem, okay? A little staircase, you got um, little itty bitty four petal flowers at the top. A spiral staircase with young seeds, uh, you know, flowers and young seeds at the top. You get down here, they're more and more mature. Let's uh, pass this around, go ahead and uh, try one of those. Um, should be plenty there for everybody. Okay, good. Alrighty. And next here. What family? Aster. Good. So before we were talking about the aster family, the chicory or dandelion subfamily, uh, which those are, you know, there's that dandelion group, they're all dandelion-like. And then if you get into the uh, aster subfamily, it's quite large with a lot of um, tribes. And tribes, you know, as a term you might not hear all that much, but um, it's just, again, a, a grouping that, um, so we're going species, the individuals, genus, that's the group, um, a, a tribe, so a bunch of uh, groups together, and then uh, subfamilies, family, order, and so on um, up the chain there. And so, uh, anybody know what this plant is? Oxide daisy. Oxide daisy, yes. And uh, this is actually part of the um, chamomile tribe. Most of the chamomiles are pretty aromatic. There's a lot of plants that um, are sort of food and not food at the same time. And so like these um, uh, daisy blossoms, you know, you're not going to sit down to a whole salad of these, but they sure look pretty in a salad, and you can eat yep. you can eat some. So uh, we don't have too many here, but uh, we could just throw a few of these in the salad for kicks. 